All right, we're back. <laughs> Long time no see. Do we, do we have to address you as a UFC co-owner now? How does that? Uh, <laughs> oh, you, you saw my post. I, I did. Yeah, I, uh, well, on the day of the IPO, I figured it would be a cool opportunity. So I, I went ahead and I texted my friend James, who does this stuff for a living, and uh, he hooked me up. How's it performing so far? Are you tracking it daily, or is that I one mean, just tucked in the back for a little so bit? So my girlfriend told me, oh, great, another thing you're going to become obsessed with now. And uh, I'm trying to not look at it, because I look at it, I'm not, in a, I'm not a day trader. You know, um, I have a lot of investments that my uncle does for me, who's my financial advisor. Um, I, he can't do IPOs, so my friend James did this for me, and he told me this is a long-term investment. You know, so I bought you know a decent amount of shares. Uh, I think about a thousand shares, and it. I don't know exactly what it's at. I think it was a, maybe a dollar down from what it was yesterday at closing. But I mean, it's, it, things fluctuate. I understand that. You know, I'm not a day trader. I'm not going to buy it up and and sell it if it goes up the next day. So, um, but I think at its high point, it was around $6 up from what I got it at. So I do, you know, a thousand shares, the math is pretty good, you yeah, know. But again, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Does that mean I get to make some, my shot caller now? Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Now you gotta go in there and be like, hey, my thousand shares, this is what we're doing in my career. and we're, we're booking this now, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm an owner here. I want this opponent, I want yeah. this date. No, <laughs> no, um, I think I'm already enough of a pain in the ass in that arena so no I just thought it was a cool opportunity and uh, I, I wanted to be uh, I want to be involved I like it I think it's cool um, if there was something that I was gonna buy that was outside my portfolio of mutual funds that I have no idea what I have you know I literally don't know a single name of a single stock that I own in my mutual fund stuff um, this I thought was just a super cool opportunity so yeah. scooped them up no doubt. yeah well, we talked about being back uh, March how frustrating was that, I guess? You know, I mean, it felt like a big moment to get back in there, yeah. put the pass behind, get yeah. back, and then it's all kind of yanked from you. I mean, uh, what was that experience like for you? So, wait, we're not going to talk about Kevin Lee? We, we, I think we did it. We don't have to, right. I don't think. We, we're, awesome. we're gone. We're cool. past that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, obviously the last round of questions for my last fight was uh, the majority was about Kevin Lee. Uh, I kind of figured that coming in for this round of questions before this fight was going to be about what it was like getting my fight canceled the day of. Um, again, I, I know there's been other fights scrapped because of, you know, COVID protocol. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I don't know if there's been a fight that was scrapped closer to fight time because of COVID protocol, okay. as was mine. And now, I want to preface what I'm going to say by starting with this. I understand the COVID protocol. I'm not complaining. Um, I understand, you know, in order for this thing to run smoothly and, and, and keep operating the way that it's operating, we have to follow certain rules. Someone on his side tested positive for COVID. It wasn't Riddell. It was someone on his team. And the fight got scrapped. It was really unfortunate timing. I had already made weight. Um, you know, I was getting up from my, I was like nine in the morning on Saturday. Uh, and again, I don't know exactly what time I would have fought, but I, I think we were probably within a 12 hour span of when I was going to fight, maybe 10 hours or so. Um, and I got up, I was making, you know, I have my morning routine as does every fighter. And I was making my coffee with my, my, my protein in it and I'm getting my supplements ready and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, we were, you know, within the hour, we're going to go over and do our morning, like warm up, shake out, whatever you want to call it. Right. And that's what we do on fight day. We have a little warm up workout, just get the blood flow, get the food digesting and, uh, et cetera. And my manager calls me and I couldn't get to the phone in time. And I was like, yo, Carlos, my coach, I was like, hey, this isn't good. And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, my manager's calling me at 9 a.m. on the fight day. This has never happened before. This is definitely, watch, I'm guaranteeing you the fight's off for some issue. And I didn't know if it would be COVID or an injury or someone, whatever, right? And uh, I called him back, and I literally looked over at Carlos and said, told you, told you. You know, I mean, it was just one of those things where you just knew, why would my manager be calling me right. at 9 a.m. on fight day? So how tough is that for you, right? Because we always hear with fighters, you know, all the hard work you put yeah. in, it's for that moment, right? Sure. To get in there and actually have the competition when you don't get that payoff. Yeah. I mean, how difficult is that for you, I guess, kind of like psychologically? or? Yeah. It was such a, a weird, like, bag of emotions, man. It was like, I was just doing another interview where I was talking about this as well, and I, I, I said it was... The first thing that happens is like, you think like, of course, right? Like, of course this, what, this is gonna happen. You know, like shocker, right? Me, of course. You know, it's already been however many months or a year and some months since I've been able to do this. And then I'll, of course this is happening, right? That was my first kind of reaction. And then anger wasn't the right word. I wasn't like, my God, fuck, man, of course. Like, I, I wasn't angry. Uh, I was extremely disappointed. Um, 
obviously a ton of work. The fight had been pushed back several times already. Um, you know, I'd been in training camp for uh, like a super long time, like a 12 or 13 week fight camp, because I got the news about the fight two weeks before Christmas. And then the fight was March 20th. So I, and you know, it's not like you're training expecting, the, I think the date originally was supposed to be February. So you start training right when you get that notice, nine weeks out from the actual fight date. Then it gets pushed back February 13th, then March 6th, then March 20th. And listen, it is what it is. I'm not complaining about the fight getting pushed back. But there is a certain level of like, oh my God, dude, so much work and like disappointment. You feel like, man, we just spent a week in lockdown in a hotel in Vegas. I made weight the day before and it's not like I'm cutting an extreme amount of weight, but weight, making weight isn't fun. It's not something I would do unless I had a fight, you know? Um, and then the last emotion, and this one's gonna sound weird, but there's definitely like a certain relief because there is anxiety and there is worry and there's nervousness that comes with getting ready for a fight. And the closer the fight gets, the more nervous you get, the more anxiety ridden you get. Um, and now again, I think there's a healthy amount of that and I think I manage it pretty well. But when that goes away in a split second, it's like instant, I don't know if relief is the right word, but that monkey's off your back. And then you feel a little bit of guilt for feeling that way. You're like, why am I feeling like relieved that I'm not fighting? You know, and, and again, but then the next kind of a cog in that system would be, okay, so yeah, I am getting this kind of like monkey off my back, but I just lost the opportunity to feel the absolute high and the, like, the, the joy that comes with a possible win. So yes, I don't have to deal with this anxiety for the next 10 hours. I don't have to go out there and put my ass on the line walking into the cage, but I also don't have the opportunity to feel how tremendous it feels when you win. So that was kind of like the natural progression of things. But I, I, never, I never really got super angry about it because I understand, you know. That's I, awesome. Yeah, I get it. I don't think I've ever heard uh, that much detail into the, the, yeah. the emotions. That's awesome. Thanks for explaining it that way. So yeah. I think it's been eight weeks since then. Um, was that the right play, the wrong? I mean, was it one of those situations where, like, hey, I'd love to fight again right away, or, hey, no, I need to decompress and yeah. recover a little bit? Um, well, I think I mentioned to you guys last time I was going to take a week to go on vacation, like a week to ten days, and I was going to go climb some mountains. I was going to go fish a little bit. Uh, I didn't get around to the fishing, but I spent a week in the mountains in upstate New York and Adirondack High Peak region. And uh, I did, I mean, again, this is I, it's supposed to be like a vacation. And it turned into 70 miles of climbing mountains. So I came back more tired than I left. Uh, it was decompressing. I don't know if, if that would be the right word, but I came back more tired than when I left. Um, within a week, I think, or so, I found out that this was going to be a possibility. So I never really left fight camp. So I, I, there was no decompression. There was no easing back into training. We started sparring that week again. I had a week in the mountains, and then it was literally back to the exact same thing. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, it, it, I don't look at it as a curse. I look at it as a kind of like a blessing. I didn't, I didn't have to get back in shape, you know. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I know that you don't like to spend a lot of time talking about opponents or anything, but when the matchup with Diego came, I mean, is there anything that appeals to you about him stylistically or as, as an opponent? Yeah, I mean, I, I, he's ranked ahead of me. <laughs> that, that, that was the, the requisite, you know. So I, I like that. I understand everybody in the top 15 is going to be a threat. I understand that everyone in the top 15 is there be, because they're good. You don't get a ranking without beating someone good. He's beat good guys. He's fought good opponents. Um, and I thought it was a great opportunity. Yeah. I was going to ask him, it almost feels – I mean, last one was a big fight, but this feels like almost an even bigger fight. Yeah, Does it, it feel that way to you? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are behind Riddell. I think a lot of people know him because he's sitting kickboxing, and um, he's a stand-up guy. He's, you know, a glory guy, and I think a lot of people know him. But, I mean, this guy's ranked 12th in the UFC. Ferreira's ranked 12th, you know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Beat Pettis. You know, I mean, he's, he's good, and it's, it's a great opportunity. Nice. Last thing for me, I mean, obviously, we're, we're, hopefully everything plays out the way it's supposed sure. to this week, but what is the plan moving forward now? I mean, we're back in there. We're done talking about Kevin Lee now. It's just back on the track. Are you sure? I, I'm done with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what's the plan? I mean, are, are, we, are we talking about, you know, you're mentioning rankings and things yeah, like yeah. that. I mean, so is that, is that the goal is to start making your way up? Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm 34 years old. Um, I'm not saying that I'm ancient by any means. Uh, I still got a lot of hay in a barn, but... I'm not getting younger, and I think if there's time to make a run at this thing, it's now, and um, 
yeah, I mean, I got the 12th ranked guy, and hopefully, you know, things go well, and then I get a guy ranked higher than that. That's, that's hopefully is the plan. You know, I got to get past this one first. Obviously, I got a job at hand, and I got to take care of that. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine that if I beat Ferreira, that I would fight someone ranked lower than him, or, you know, yeah. outside of the rankings. So, yeah, that's the plan. Hey, man, I was wondering, did you know the UFC were going to try and book you back right away, or was there a risk you could go off and get fat and just chill out and suddenly not be ready for a fight? Well, I was under the impression uh, from the way that my manager had worded it that we we're going to get back in soon, stay ready. So uh, regardless of that, I was going to climb mountains for a week. So, you know, I, I went and did that, and I, I said, I'll figure it out when I come back. And I was, you know, MIA for a week in the mountains. I came back, and within a week, I kind of found out about this. So I think it was good timing. But, yeah, I... I the impression that I got is UFC wanted to get me back in there ASAP. I'm sure, uh, I hate to put a negative thought in your brain, but it's already happened to you once. Do you have any sort of fear like, oh, please, let's just make sure this fight happens? Are you going to be on Friday pacing around just being like, please, please, please? I mean, you kind of come in, and I knew this the last time. This, there are certain things that can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it happened once the same amount of people are on the card, people coming from out of country, people coming from different states, of course it could happen again. I'm praying that it doesn't, but it's not, it's out of my hands. I'm going to do exactly what I can do to be ready for Saturday. But, you know, of, of course, there's obviously thoughts that pop into your mind that are like, dude, if this happens again, I'm just going to tell, you know, hey, sit me out until this COVID thing is over or something, you know, but obviously that, that, that's, a, that's a joke. But, you know, it's like, of course, there are thoughts that it could happen again. Has the weight cuts in close proximity to each other been a problem for you, or have you been able to manage that pretty okay? No, uh, my weight's pretty good year-round. Um, it gets a little closer to the weight class when I'm in fight camp and approaching the fight. One thing I didn't do this fight camp, uh, for those that know me pretty well, they know that I do a practice weight cut two weeks before the wagon. I did not do that this time. I figured it was close enough from the time I had made weight previously that I didn't need to do it again, and I didn't, and my weight's perfect right now, so... Yep.